Shashi Dari everybody. So today, uh, last class we talk about uh, we talk about internal resistance and then combination of internal resistance. And then uh, one more thing I would like to tell you is uh, this year uh, we are not having a parallel and a series combination of resistor. However, it is very important you have learned this now in all class. In case of series combination resistor, I write here just for recapitulations. Series combinations we have equivalent resistance is equal to one uh, R one plus R two plus R three, so so on. It is just the sum of uh, individual resistance. And in case of a parallel combinations, we have parallel combination. We have equivalent resistance is equal to reciprocal of R one plus R two plus R three go on. So this is what we have. So in case of series combination, so equivalent resistance is greater than the greatest of its individual resistance. So that means uh, it, it, it just, this just go on combining, this just go on adding up. However, in case of parallel combinations, uh, equivalent resistance becomes less than least of its individual resistance. That means in case of parallel combination, resistance is going to reduce and in case of a series combination, resistance is going to increase. So this is what we have and then uh, we know how to how to see whether it is a parallel or a series we have done it last time maybe we have learned this in lower class also right so the purpose of a series and a parallel uh, understanding of uh, uh, the purpose of understanding a series and parallel combination is to find out its equivalent resistance and once you find out its equivalent resistance then we are uh, this help us to find out a current in a circuit and then a voltage across the resistance. This, this is all what we are going to find out, right? Now, now this time, what we are going to do is we are going to use, we are going to know, know one more rule for the Kirchhoff's rules, and that that simplify our understanding about uh, resistance and circuit in, a, in 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 general circuit, right? So in circuit, whenever we have a circuit, we will be we, we are having a three important things, three important physical quantity. Like first is a voltage, second one is a resistance, third one is a current. So this helps us to find out uh, uh, voltage and current and resistance. And uh, some of this problem can be sorted out by uh, knowing the parallel and series combinations. However, for some networks which are a little complicated, uh, the, the parallel and the series won't able to uh, simplify, won't able to uh, do the job. So therefore, we we introduce a rule, some new rule called Kirchhoff's rule, and that simplify, that further simplify the understandings, the the electrical circuit, right? So this rule consists of uh, two particular rules, and the rules. The two rules are junction rule and and loop rule, right? So this junction rule, the junction rule says that uh, whenever current pass through any junctions, when I say whenever current pass through, I, I, I have a resistor like this, this is like this. So whenever whenever current pass through any junction, this is going to be a junction. This is going to be a junction, right? Whenever current pass through any junctions, right? This is junctions. This is junction. Whenever current pass through any junction, let's say this is current I is entering to a junctions, and then you see current undergoing a distributions. Current undergoing a distributions, right? Current undergoing a distributions, and let's say this side has I one, this side has I two. This is R R one R two. And the junction rule says that junction rule says that whatever current entering the junction must be equal to current leaving the junction. That means there, there, there is there is no I say this is I right. There is no current left at uh, junction right. Whatever current uh, entering uh, to a junction must be equal to current leaving the junction. So this is rule number one. So that means uh, the the, the current undergoing a distributions, alright, and the total current is always equal to sum of those two current, right? So any junction, the sum of the current entering the junction is equal to the sum of current leaving the this is what we have in case of 
uh, what we have in case of Kichor. And this rule talks about the distribution of a current. Right? And again, the distribution is based on a resistance. If a resistance is higher, then the current would be a less. If a resistance is lower, then current would be more. Right? Now, the second part is the loop rules. Whenever we talk about loop, this is closed electrical circuit. This is a closed electrical circuit, right? Uh, the simplest example of closed electrical circuit I can give you is this. All right, I have this. I have a set of uh, EMF E, and then this is a resistant R, internal resistant R, right? So this is the current passing through it. This is one loop. This is one, this is a simplest loop, right? So, so this is what, so the, the, this says that, the loop rule says that algebraic sum of a change in the potentials, change in the potentials around a closed loop involving a resistor and a cell if the loop is always zero. And all the change in the potential must be zero in a loop. That means, that means uh, uh, in this circuit, look at here, I mean, this is the EMF. This is the EMF. This is going to be a potential. This is going to be a potential across. Uh, this this is going to be a potential across R. This is going to be a potential across internal resistance R. So what is the potential? This potential is going to be this. Uh, this potential is going to be that. All right. So the rule says that the sum of potentials. And EMF in a loop is going to be zero. That means EMF is the one that uh, gives up potentials, and whatever EMF provides is all being consumed by uh, the respective resistors. All right. So this is what we talk about, and this rule says that this rule says that this EMF, this EMF, I just say this like this. This is what this rule talks about. I write here, this will say this. This says that the, the algebraic sum of potentials across the resistors and EMF in a loop must be zero. In a loop must be zero. So this is what we have. This is what we have. Uh, this is a two rule. And now look at here. Uh, regarding a loop rule is concerned. Look at here. Uh, we have to we have to do a loop. We have to do a loop, right? So we will use uh, we will we will study a few uh, few 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 conventions, right, for making it much simpler. The the, the, the rule is that whenever we draw a loop, like look look at here, I'll, I'll, I'll just draw this circuit right here, a simple circuit. I'm going to draw here uh, internal resistance. This is R. This is EMF. This is small R. I, 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 and I'm going to draw a loop. My loop goes something, something, something like this. So this is going to be a A, B, C, D, E, A. So I can a loop like this. This loop has, has to be a cyclic, right? So my loop is going to be A, B, C, D, E, A. All right. The rule says that. The rule says that the direction of a loop and a current, if a direction of loop and a current are along the same directions, alright, then we take a potential which is going to be negative. So if a direction of loop and a direction of potentials are direction of loop and a direction of currents are same, then we are going to take a potential negative. Look at here. This in this case, uh, direction of loop. Mm. Direction of loop, direction of loop, of loop is along currents. Look at here. This is this is this is written here. So therefore, now I R become minus. I R become minus. I R become minus. All right. So this is if a direction of a loop and a direction of a currents are opposite. Then this IR become plus IR. So this is this is directions are along, this is directions are along, this is directions are opposites. 
this is one thing. This this you should keep in mind. Whenever you draw draw law, first you draw law. This is up to you how you are going to choose law. And once you choose a law, all right, then you just see whether the direction of loop and occurrence are opposite or along. If it is the opposite, then it is a positive. IR is positive. If it is uh, along, then IR is going to be negative. Now the second part is. If a loop goes from negative terminal to positive, this, 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 this loop goes from negative terminal to positive terminals. If a loop goes from negative terminal to a positive terminal, then EMM is going to be positive. If loop goes from negative terminal of a cell to a positive terminal of cell, then I am going to get EMM as positive. If a loop, if I say if a loop goes from positive terminal to a negative terminal, then I am going to take EMF negative. That you should keep in mind. Very important, right? So if the direction of loop is from a positive terminal of a cell to negative terminal of a cell, then oh, voltage, alright, then EMF of a cell is taken as a negative, otherwise it is taken as positive. So this is very, very important rule, a very, very important uh, rule that we are going to uh, do and now we are here. Once you take this loop, I take a loop A, B, C, D, E, A. This is the loop. Now let's say I R, this is going to be I. Uh, this direction of loop and the direction of current are the same, then I'm going to put here I R minus I R plus. Again, direction of current and, uh, and the direction of loop are along the same directions. Again, I'm, I'm going to say R plus. And the loop goes from negative terminal to positive terminal, so therefore I am going to this. This is going to be zero, and this is what we say as Fischer's loop rule. And once I say this, this is going to be I R plus I R is equal to E M F. Oh, that's it. E M F is equal to I R plus I R. So this is what we, this is a simple rule, and in this case this is what we have done actually, right? This is what we call as a V plus I R. This is done. So this is what I have. This is what I have. Now, now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll, I'll give you one one simple example. All right. One simple example. This is the simple example, right? So this is uh, this is little uh, little complicated network, and I here I'm having a two Z. Uh, this is having a 80 volt. This is having a 45 volts. And now in, uh, in this diagram, all the loops are already written. Otherwise, uh, you can you can draw your own loop. All right. So now what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to use a uh, uh loop rule, right? Uh, it shows junction rule, right? So this is the current, all right? So the junction rule says that this is the current, this is actually I3, this is I1, this is I2. So the junction rule says that I1 plus I2 must be equal to I3. Why? Because I3 enters through this junction, then split into a two branches, all right? So therefore, total current that is I3 entering the junction is equal to uh, current leaving is I1 plus I2. This is this is and this is this gives an idea about uh, the current uh, the relationship between I3, I1 and I2. Alright, this is how we get one equation. Now the second one is I'm going to loop, I'm I'm going to use a loop. Alright. The the purpose of doing this is to to find out either uh, I or R, whatever. Here in this context, it is going to find out, we are going to find out I, right? So now here, uh, this example I am going to give you. I take a this loop, A, A, H, where is H, A, H, D, D, then C, uh, C, B, A, this is the loop. I'm going to take and once I take this loop, now look at the look at the current, right? It gives that 
this is the direction of current and the direction of uh, loops are in the same direction. So I say minus 30 I1 is written here. Minus, what else? And minus, uh, how much is that? Uh, this is the plus, this plus 45 V, 45 B, and then minus, look at here. Minus I1, I3, minus 41I3, 41I3. So this is what M total is going to be zero. This is this is uh, what we have. Uh, this is a resistor, uh, this is the voltage, this is a, uh, this is the EMF, this is the voltage, this is the voltage. So the the algebraic sum is going to be zero. And this is one, one case. Now next, uh, this is how I do it, right? Now the next loop I'm going to take is A. This is A, H, H, then G, G, then E, E, F, G, A. So this loop I'm going to take. Once I check this loop, I'm going to write here. So again, look at here, this is going to be minus uh, 30 I1 plus. Now look at this current direction is this, opposite directions. So this is going to be a 20 I2 plus 20 I2 plus. And this is going to be 1, therefore uh, here I have ate up both, both, so 20 plus 1 is 41, alright. So here also I have ate up 1, uh, here actually uh, 30 or uh, 40, this is a 40, right? This is a 40, alright, 40 plus 1 is going to be a 41, here it is written like this. And then uh, 1, I2, alright, and then what else? Then this is negative now. Minus 80 is going to be zero. So this is how you solve that. So now we want two equations. This is uh, this is some first equations. This is second equations. We got third equations. So now you are having a, we are having a three equations, all right? And we are having a three unknowns. Unknowns are I1, I2, and R3. So maybe you have done this in a uh, class tense. Uh, that is that is uh, elimination methods or substitution methods. All right, and you can you can do this. All right, and the, the aim is to purpose is to find out I one, I two, I three, and you can do it. Right, you can you can do this as a home assignment. Right. So this is how. So now the purpose here is to how to how to set equations, how to set equations, how to get equations from 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 a circuit. Right. So that. Once you get equations, unknown can be easily found. All right. So this is one case. All right. So this is how you apply Kirchhoff's rule, right? Now, uh, now I will do one uh, example problem. This is one example problem, right? So example problem says that this is a battery having a 10 volt, uh, a battery of 10 volts and a negligible internal, that, that's why internal resistance is almost zero, right? So whatever our potential is, whatever EMF is going to be equal to uh, potential. And so this is connected to a two diagonal opposite uh, size of a cubical network consists of a 12, right? So one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10 12, right? 12 resistors, each having resistor is going to be each resistor, uh, each resistor having a resistance 1, uh, what is that? 1 ohm. 1 ohm. Mm. Now you are asked to find out equivalent resistance. You are asked to find an equivalent resistance and a current to each, current to each. Uh, each uh, each branch. That means you are once you find I, uh, you can easily find out the current in each branch. So this is uh, this is a whole network. 
Look at here now, as I explain here. This is an ID. It is not visible. This is an ID. And since the uh, uh, resistors are same, 1, 1, 1, all right? 1 ohm, 1 ohm. So the distribution is equal, right? So therefore, this is going to be I, I, I. All right? So now we have, this is I, this I distributed into a 2. All right? So therefore, this becomes I by 2, I by 2. This I distributed into a 2, I by 2, I by 2. All right? This I distributed into a 2. Uh, I'll use a different pen. This I distributed into a 2, then this is I, I by 2s. Alright. Now look at here. This I by 2, this I by 2, they just add up, we get I. This I this I by 2, that I by 2 add up, you get I. Alright. And look at here. And look at here. This I by 2 and that I by 2 add up, you get I. This is how it goes, and finally it comes out. It enters and finally it comes out. Finally, I, I, I. So you are going to get I3 coming out from a uh, form of point C. So this is how our uh, uh, network works. So now our aim is to find out uh, current and then net uh, equivalent resistance. Look at here. So I'm going to take this uh, this uh, loop, right? The loop that I'm going to take is let's say take a loop. The loop I'm going to take is A. Uh, shall I take this loop A? I'll take this loop A. I'll take this, right? All right. A and then B. I take this loop A, B, C, C, C prime, then E and F E, then A. This loop I'm going to take. Once I take this loop. And the direction of current and the loop. So this is this is going to be this is how loop goes. Alright. So direction of current is uh, I minus uh, this is again minus minus I by two minus I by two minus I and goes like this. This is a plus ten. So this is we got out of loop rule, right? This is a loop rule. Let's say loop rule. So it goes on uh, plus two i minus i by two. Let's say this is zero. It goes like this. So two i plus i by two equal to ten, and then this is of. Four, four, oh, I plus I divided by two, ten. Finally, I get five by two I equal to ten. Twenty I is twenty. Twenty divided by five. Finally, it is four ampere. Current is four ampere. I is four ampere. So I is four ampere. All right. Now, now what I'm what I'm supposed to find is. To find out equivalent resistance, right? What is equivalent resistance? Equivalent resistance is that voltage is equal to I equivalent. So since the internal resistance is almost zero, I take this as a 10. And how much is current, right? Uh, so we'll be having this. Uh, current is known, known to us, all right? So uh, what is the current passing through it? Now, I R, uh, this is total current is going to be a 3i. Okay, yeah, this is a 3i going through it. All right, uh, total 3i. So i is going to be 3i. 3i, 3 into 4 into equivalent resistance. So therefore, this is going to be uh, this is going to be equivalent resistance is to 10 divided by 2 ohms. This is equal to 5 divided by 6 in our own. So this is equivalent resistance. So it may be very easy to find out equivalent resistance. Otherwise, if you go ahead and see whether it is a pattern on the series, this is going to be very complicated. So equivalent resistance is how much? Uh, you know, 5 by 6 ohms. Uh, how much is current? 
uh, uh, I is going to be uh, 4A, uh, and I half is going to be uh, two, uh, 2A, and 3I is going to be uh, 12A, right? So this is what I have. So each branch, uh, 2A, then uh, I, 4A. Some branch having a 2A, other branch having a 12A, and an other branch is having again 4A. This is how we are going to find out uh, current as well as equivalent resistance. All right. So this is what we have. Very simple. All right. Uh, if once we use circuit chops rules, if we don't use circuit chops rules, if we, if we just go on stick and uh, uh, parallel in the series, this becomes very complicated. Okay. So this is what I have. This is again uh, your textbook example, right? And then, uh, one more example is there. Uh, your textbook example number uh, 3.7, you do it yourself, right? Uh, now, uh, next, I'm going to do is Wheatstone Bridge. Very important uh, concept. This is extremely very important concept. And this has a huge application, right? Uh, look at here. Now, again, we are going to use a picture of soon in this case, or in, in this kind of concept also. So, which one bridge? Why it is called a bridge? In this shape is like a bridge, right? Uh, it is a bridge like a network of resistors. It is a bridge like network of resistors having a four resistor. Uh, it, this consists of a four resistor, right? Four resistors, right? This consists of a four resistor. It, it is a network of a bridge like network of resistor having a four resistors, all right? R1, R2, R3, and R4, whatever, right? R1, R2, R3, and R4. And such that, look at here, uh, I have a two di uh, diagonals, right? And AC diagonal, right? AC diagonal, diagonal is connected to a battery, and this is what we call as a battery arm. This is called a battery arm. Why? AC is connected to a battery so that uh, the voltage is supplied. And uh, another uh, uh, diagonal that is connected to a galvanometer. This is a galvanometer. This is a galvanometer. The arm uh, AC connected to a battery and con um, BD is connected to a uh, galvanometers. Right. So this is what I have. And galvanometer has some resistance called RG. It has some resistance called RG. All right. Now, now this principle says that. So we call it as a balance. <coughs> balance card. In, in this. We, we talk about some sort of balance conditions. Balance conditions or null point conditions. Null point. So I, I say this network is said to be a balance. <coughs> this network is said to be a balance. If, if a two sides, either I say these two sides are balanced or these two sides are balanced. It doesn't, it, this doesn't make any difference, right? Either these two sides are balanced or that two sides are balanced. So how do you say that these two sides are balanced? And when do you say that these two sides are balanced? So this question normally arises, right? How do you say that these two, balance, two, these two sides are balanced? And when do you say that these, these two sides are balanced, right? So it is said that it is said that uh, under a balance conditions, under a balance, once these two are balanced, uh, the, the, this will not, if you, if, if you see us, say so, uh, once the two sides are balanced, uh, neither, you know, neither this goes uh, down nor that goes uh, up. Alright, so this stays balanced, right? So, it, yeah, uh, likewise, once these two sides are balanced, here, you know, Talk about is there won't be any current, right? IG is going to be zero. IG is going to be zero, right? There is no current passing through 
flow through or uh, calorimeter, right? So I said that balance condition or null point condition is such that Ig is equal to zero. Alright, Ig is equal to zero, right? Uh, when you achieve this condition, then Ig is zero, we say that it is going to be a balance. So we are going to prove here, right? We are going to prove here, right? Ig is equal to zero. If Ig is zero, somehow if Ig is zero, why because it is equally distributed, so current doesn't enter into it through this, right? So under balance condition Ig is zero, I am going to take a network. I'm, I'm going to take a network that is this network, so I, so I, I use a picture of source. Uh, let's say okay. you chose a loop rules. You chose loop rule says that um, loop rule uh, loop that I'm going to take is A uh, A uh, A B and I'm going to take this loop A, B, uh, G, and then D, A. I take this loop. That is, look at here. I just take this loop like this. Uh, direction of current uh, minus I2, R2. Uh, this is zero. And then minus I1 R1 equal to zero. This is the picture of loop rules. The another loop rule again. I'm going to take this loop. Other loop I'm going to take is this is a first loop. Second loop is B C D G. B, the loop goes like this, so minus I4, R4, then plus uh, uh, R3, I3, I3, R3, 0 equal to 0. This is what I have. Now, the, since it is under balance conditions, since it is under a balance condition, since it is under a balance conditions, uh, Ig is equal to zero. So therefore, I just say I two must be equal to I four, and I three must be equal to I one, right? Must be equal to I uh, I three. All right. Therefore, I rewrite these equations. <coughs> uh, uh, I1 uh, R1 and sorry, this is uh, plus this is plus uh, equal to I2 R2 R2 Okay, now next, uh, therefore I just say I1 divided by I2 is equal to R2 divided by R1, equation number 3, and again I take these equations, so I4 is the required I2, I2, R4 uh, equal to I1, R3, so again I can write this I1, I2 is equal to uh, R4 divided by R3. Alright, so uh, now this is let's say equation number 4. This is equation number 4. So I compare these two equations, this I can easily compare. I can compare this two. And once I compare equation 3 and equation 4, finally I got R2 divided by R1 equal to R4 divided by R3. Okay, this is so look at here now. This is nice, right? Uh, or I can write 
R1 divided by R2 is equal to R3 divided by R4. That's what I can this. So, uh, once you get a band conditions, so uh, the ratio of the ratio of two sides, the ratio of this side is equal to the ratio of that side. Or the ratio of these two sides, look at the one. Ratio of these two sides is R1 divided by R2 is equal to R3 divided by R4. Or ratio of these two sides, I can rewrite this as equal to uh, R2 divided by R4 equal to R1 divided by R3. This is what I have. So these two are equal, right? So, so there was when uh, the balance condition is going to achieve, or the un answer would be if the ratio of two sides of, uh, of networks are equal, the four resistor networks are equal, then we say it is under a balance condition. Uh, conditions. When we achieve the balance condition, right? That means uh, under such a balance conditions, there is no current passing through a gallon meter. No current passing through a gallon meter, right? So therefore, whenever you get this network, whenever you get this kind of network, all right. Still, I can write say that R1 divided by R2 must be equal to R3 divided by R4. Or I can write R2 divided by R4 must be equal to R1 divided by R2. So therefore, you can easily know, right? So if, if this condition is achieved, if this condition is achieved, now look at here, if one is unknown, let's say R4 is unknown, right? So if R4 is unknown, R4 is unknown, if R4 is unknown, then we can get out uh, uh, R4 out of this relation, right? So therefore, I just say R1 divided by R2 equal to R3 divided by R4. So R4 is equal to R3 divided by R2. Alright. Uh, R3 divided by R R1 into by um, R2. So this is what I have. So unknown can be found easily, right? Look at this. So the so the, the purpose, the so the one of the main purpose of uh, Having this uh, network is to this is a special network is to find out unknown resistance. So unknown unknown resistance can be found using these relations. If this this all are known, right? There's there's that all are known, then unknown that is R4 can be easily found. So this is one very, very important, right? So this is what we have. Alright. So having this now, applying this, we can uh, we will apply this concept to uh, Mr. Uh, meter bridge and a Mr. bridge. So that means uh, this is a concept, right? So now next time what we are going to do is we are going to achieve these conditions. We are going to achieve these conditions by changing either of these two, by changing either of these two, right? By changing uh, any of these two, right? So this is what we have. So uh, so so with this, uh, I'm going to start, right? So, Wilson is very, very important, uh, very, very important uh, concept. So, so this concept again, I'm, I'm going to write R1 divided by R4 R2 is equal to R3 divided by R4. This network, this relation ratio, right? And very, very or, or else I can rewrite this one by R3 can be written as R2 divided by this. Very very important relation. So so later class we we'll apply this and try to get uh, apply this to a meter bridge and the meter bridge is a very practical. We we'll do this in a practical class to find out unknown resistors. So the, the sole purpose is uh, purpose here is to first understand the balance conditions and find out unknown resistors. Thank you.